What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Flat Out. Today we are at Kyle Mohan shop down here in Signal Hill, California. Today we're going to be tearing apart the half bridge harnesses and trying to figure out what's going on and what the problems are and see why it's not building compression. So hopefully we can get it done today and get it back in the car and get, you know, go have some fun with it, get it diner tuned again and see what it can actually make. All right guys, so we got the half ridge rennesses up on the stand right now. We're gonna start tearing into it and trying to figure it out. And this is Kyle from Kyle Mahan Racing. He's got a website, kylemohanracing.com. I do. You guys can check him out, try to, you know, help him out, buy some stuff. I mean, he's got a lot of stuff for RX-8s, RX-7s, FCs. Yep, porting, porting templates, uh, very cool other components for the engine, offer services, lapping, porting, good stuff. Anything rotary, he can do it for you. So, you guys, check him out and hit him up if you guys need anything. And we're gonna get to this right now and figure out what the heck's going on in here. All right, guys, we're tearing down. Or we tore apart the clutch right now. We're gonna pull the flywheel off, the oil pan, the front cover. <laughs> So we took the front cover off, all the front oil pump action, oil pans off. Um, so basically we're down to the, the short block. Um, and so basically taking out the tension bolts will now allow us to unstack this block. Yeah. See what's going on in there. I hope it's something simple. It will be because it was running. Yeah, it was running. Yeah, yeah, I, just, I don't expect tragedy. No, it was running. Yeah, it's like it the Matrix. Just... You got to believe in it. Yeah. <laughs> I believe this rotary is still okay. Well, I believe it is too because the compression never really dropped. It yeah, just stayed just, consistently low. Well. That's just side <laughs> seals. They're just a little too loose. Yeah, so. We're going to pull Something these out real quick. Swapped around. Or... Yeah. Where was that last, uh, last piece? Yeah. So. So, I was in the auto, and then, oh, not last, it was the year before that, and then his R8 from last year, and then his FEMA FD over there under the car cover. You gotta move, the stud's in my way. Oh, I did, I fingered it. <laughs> That's mine. Can't have it. <laughs> ah, more mess. Yeah, at least the rides are down there to catch it. That's right, we got more. Alright, we're good. We got it. <laughs> we're good. We got it. We're okay. Alright. I gotta do the same thing. <laughs> camera on camera. Yeah. Vlogging on vlog here. Vlog on vlog. Alright guys, we got the rear rudder out. Which is over here. And the rear iron right here. So here's our half bridge. And the other porch is opened up quite a bit. And then we have our lightened rudders. One thing we notice is that there's a good size gouge right here in the iron, so kind of a bummer, but it's alright. We'll figure it out. So 
we got stuff apart. Carol's going through the oil, oil control rings and scraper rings and all the seals, making sure everything looks good. And we found out that the rotors were put in backwards by somebody, and I'm not going to mention who. <laughs> that's probably not helping things out. So, I mean, that's I'm, I'm glad we discovered that. Um, that might have caused a little bit of that weird wear we saw. Yeah. Um, I could think that maybe running the uh, the scraper rings back backwards might not be a great idea. No, it probably isn't. And the same thing with the cut, but it works. I mean, you're probably just sacrificing a little bit of power and longevity, but we're going to get those in right. This was a balanced motor, so that'll probably help out with the balance as well. Yeah. Good news is bearings look great. Yep. WPC treated shaft looks beautiful. Um, I think apex seals, most of the springs, everything looks pretty usable. I think it's going to be a matter of uh, checking the tolerances on the side seals, on the side seals, and uh, double checking to make sure that uh, all of those are sealed up good. We were probably losing some comp compression in there somewhere since oh. it was so even. Yeah, I mean it was. So. It was even on all sides, which is yeah. Or it was like really close on all sides, so yeah. I, I was like, okay, so yeah. it's not an apex seal. Yeah, it's either gonna be that all the apex seals have an equal deficiency, like warpage or something that's causing them not to seal, but they look pretty good. I'll, I'll check them as well, but just visually, they look very flat and straight. And then, so that pretty much leaves it down to either corner seals or side seals. And yeah. RX-8 corner seals really don't screw up that yeah. often. That, that's kind of hard to. <laughs> yeah. They're I mean, either in right or wrong. Yeah, so you can put them in upside right here down. Right here is a corner seal right yeah. here, and it's kind of hard to mess that up. If you put it in upside down, it breaks the motor instantly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that wasn't the case. Yeah. So it ran for three thousand miles. So. Yeah, yeah. So we'll decarb in the rotors. Um, yeah. We're gonna clean everything up, polish up the bearings, yeah. and uh, replace some side seals and uh, maybe some other stuff too. Sweet. Fresh paint. Yeah, fresh paint. We gotta make it look good for the new car. Fresh paint. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So once we get more into it, I'll bring you guys in on it. And everything looks good except the corner seals or side seals, right? Yeah. Basically, it looks like the side seals are a little too loose at this point. Okay. So besides the rotors being backwards, the side seals were another issue. So we got new ones. We're going to replace those. We're going to clean up the rotors, decarbon them and everything, make sure everything moves properly once we reinstall everything and put the motor back together. And I mean, look at the finish on the freaking E-shaft after the WPC. Yeah, it looks real nice. It still looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love that. So yeah, so we're going to start cleaning up everything and I don't know, start, well, maybe start prepping to get ready to put it back together. All right, guys, so we had two questions on, um, you know, one was for balancing the rotors, you know, individually and then as a whole. And then another question was uh, three, mil, three mil apex seals on the RX-8 rotors. So I don't know if Kyle wants to put some input on those. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I highly recommend balancing. Um, with Mazda tricks and the way we always did it with our race motors, which worked out great, was you're balancing the front rotor to the rear counterweight and the rear rotor to the front counterweight. If any modifications are done to the rotors, like lightning, um, if you're replacing a rotor that maybe is from a different engine because you're trying to rematch a set, even if the weights are really close, we usually still recommend going back to balancing. Um, even from the factory, most of your assemblies were balanced to some extent, and uh, with what we do at Mazda Tricks, it takes it one step further. So, you know, it's nice to bring everything into a closer tolerance, closer balance, just like you would any race motor or high performance motor. Helps especially when you're going to higher RPM or pushing the yeah. limits with boost or anything like that. Um, and then what was the other one? The, the apex seals? Yeah, the three mil apex seals yeah. for the RX-8. Um, <clears throat> well, there's a lot of a lot of thoughts on apex seals and a lot of reasons people do different things. My personal experience is you don't want an apex seal to weigh too much. The factory has always moved to lighter and lighter apex seals, which usually reduces chatter at higher RPMs, which makes everything last longer and seal better. Um, as evolution has happened with race seals and with the manufacturer, 
Um, also, apex seals have become narrower, and the radius has had less dome, so it's a little flatter at the top than it used to be. So generally, when people talk about 3 millimeter apex seals, um, they're, they're either utilizing a older apex seal, which personally I don't like the design as much, or they're running a modern performance 3 millimeter apex seal, which uh, I don't really recommend going backwards. Um, I, I recommend going forward, so lighter, lighter is always better, in my opinion, as long as the tune is right. Um, but if you are going to a 3 millimeter apex seal, I think you know the, the curvature, what the apex seal is doing, all of those are really important. Um, other things to consider with RX-8 rotors is that means you now need to modify your corner seal or run an old school or aftermarket corner seal. I run OEM seals on pretty much all of my race RX-8 motors and 13B race motors. I've never needed an aftermarket seal. They don't break, so it's not usually the problem. Um, and with your apex seals, if you really did need more strength to the apex seal than going to a deepened two millimeter groove, I think is a great option. Um, so you're still keeping it lightweight, but adding a little more strength, or if there is some reason where you do need that extra strength of a three millimeter seal, then generally you'd be running something probably aftermarket, um, a ENJ, Ionetti, some type of race seal for a particular reason. Um, so then you have to make sure that you're jigging the rotor up properly and it's being done properly. Um, because improperly cut grooves can lead to quick failure as well. So generally, I leave the apex seal grooves alone. If I make them deeper, I'm usually leaving them two millimeter, and there's technique to that. And if you're in a situation where you've got a, a very high value or irreplaceable rotor and it has damage and the only way to save it is go to three millimeter, then I think you know there's definitely a reason to do it. But right off the bat, to modify perfectly good rotors to carry a heavier apex seal, to me seems like you know, you're adding strength but you're carrying weight so you have to explain your goals and convince me that that's what you really need to do. Because there's always a reason for each modification and it's just a matter of what they're trying to accomplish. In this motor's case, uh, high RPM, um, boost potentially in its future, um, nothing extreme by any means, still within street or general race. Uh, uh, modifications, I would definitely leave it two millimeter. Right. Um, and uh, right now, I wouldn't even bother deepening the groove because that in itself can can sometimes lead to complications of problems. Um, right. You know, got to really right. think about what you're doing. Yeah, and like he said, yeah, they don't break. Yeah, apex seals don't break unless something else happens. Yeah, yeah, and you know. Apex seals don't spontaneously get up and blow up. Right. Um, <laughs> usually, it's it's a lack of fuel, lack of octane, uh, pre ignition, yeah. detonation. And yeah, and yeah. A fuel slosh. Um, it's usually better to trace the problem down than try to mask it with easy fixes. Yeah. 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 Bigger apex seals still blow up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a big, big enough detonation, it, yeah. they just blow up either way. Trust so. me, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's got, you know, two drift yeah. cars and an FD and yeah. years of experience. So Proper tuning uh, usually leads to the best situation. And, right. You know, if there's something causing a problem, it's better to, to find what that problem is. Right, exactly. Cool. Let's clean Sweet. them up. Yeah, let's clean them up. So we got the rotor in our parts washer. It's really just hot, soapy water, and today it's not even hot yet. That's not great. <laughs> and my favorite cleaning tools are just really a, a wire brush. This is great for getting the carbon off. Um, definitely don't use that on your bearing. Protect the bearing. Do not scuff the bearing. scotch Bright pads, great cleaning tool. And then this is a, a, you know, a little bit more rare than those first couple. This is a, a cutting tool from a lathe, which people can probably order online. It's not that to find, but they're great for scraping carbon. You don't want to damage your rotor, so you're not trying to cut material off. Um, you're really just trying to remove the carbon. And I'll just take the flat edge, drag it across a little bit, and you can see it's just uh, cleaning off that top layer of carbon, which is actually pretty difficult to remove. 
I do have sonic cleaners, but not everybody has sonic cleaners. So we're kind of just showing the manual. The manual nice. labor side yeah. of everything. Manual carbon removal. Yeah, because it is kind of a pain. Yeah. It's pretty hard stuff. It works on pistons too. See, this is why you run a 85 Yeah, E85 has a lot less carbon. And you see the one side has more carbon buildup. Yeah. But it's not so bad. No. We're going to soak it, scrub it. Next pocket, next chamber. And we'll scrape, scrape. Giving away the secrets here. ATF, if you soak it in ATF. Yeah, that's that right. That really removes the carbon. You let it soak overnight. Yeah, I think I let mine... Yeah. The I have these the first time I did it. I think I let them soak in there for like a week because it yeah. was just baked in there. Yeah, this is the impatient technique. This is like you take the motor apart and you're like, oh, I want to clean up the rotors right now. Solvent tank's not even hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my impatience has led to techniques to get her done. Yep. You don't really have to worry about screwing up the rotor too much with that either. I've never hurt the rotor with this. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure you could. Oh well, yeah. Somebody could. <laughs> I have so, somebody, yeah. somebody could. I mean, I know people like stab themselves with screwdrivers. Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> notice I'm scraping away and over the top of the, the apex seal groove, so that way I'm just keeping my, myself yeah. from screwing it up, basically. And you're not. You know, yeah, not, hurting the, not the groove, in, yeah. Keeping it nice and flat. Notice I have a razor blade, I'm not even using that. I just want a nice flat edge. Yeah, some of that's all you need. Yep. There we go, that removed a lot of the, the basic carbon buildup. Yeah. And then the side's got the typical stuff on it. Fresh Scotch Bright pad is always better than used Scotch Bright pad. Yeah. Sweet, so we're going to keep going at this and try to get these cleaned up and start getting ready to prep the motor for uh, reassembly. Oops. Yeah, and don't hurt the bearings. Yeah, yeah, definitely don't hurt the bearings. Bearings look great. Yeah. Look yeah. at that, a little scrubbing. Yeah. Got to do the other side. We're getting there, but yeah. So we'll bring you back once we start assembling or if Kyle has any more to share with you guys. Alright guys, so got pretty much all the carbon cleaned off of these. These are all cleaned up. I'm ready to go. And Kyle's got the iron and the two rotor housings in the bath. Alright guys, we're getting the rotors ready to be prepped. They're all dried up and clean. And this is one well, of the rotor housings. Very minimal wear. The uh, WPT really helps out on all that type of wear and stuff. So we're getting ready to go and I'm going to make this a two part video. So one of, uh, you know, disassemble and clean up and then the next one will be all the uh, assembly and all the little nitty gritty stuff. So if you guys want to watch that, that'll be coming up next. But we'll see you guys next time and take it easy.